Today we're going to be taking a look at how you go about evaluating the difference quotient. Um, to start with, I have three different formulas here. Um, all of them actually are the exact same thing. They're the difference quotient. Um, just different variables are used in each of them. Um, the key thing is being able to read whatever difference quotient your textbook happens to use. You just have to be able to read the notation. In this first one, they're using the A plus H and an A there and an H there. Okay, that set of variables. In this one, you are plugging in an A plus H into the function F, and then you are subtracting the function when A has been plugged into it, and you're dividing by H. Okay, here we've swapped up the variables, and instead of having an A right there, we've got X's, but they kept the H's. So on this one, you would be plugging in X plus H into the function, and then subtracting the function itself as it sits, F of X. All right, and on this last one, probably um, more closely to one that would be used um, maybe in an early calculus book, um, f of x plus delta x. Delta x is just like an h or an a or anything else. It just represents um, a value. So in this one, you're taking x plus delta x and plugging it into the function, and then again, subtracting the function itself, and then with the delta x on the bottom. All right, so we'll work out a couple examples here. I think on this first example, I will use the first formula, and then maybe on my last example, I'll use this formula. Okay, seeing that they are all done the same way. Okay, so I've got a function f of x is equal to 2x minus 3. So now I'm going to read this notation and do exactly what it says. All right, so I think I'm going to actually start by writing that down. Um, let's do f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. All right, and actually before I get started here, I do kind of want to think... Um, think of this as two quantities being subtracted on the top. So I'm going to do this first part of this formula. I'm going to take a plus h and plug it into the formula. All right, plug it into my function. All right, then I am going to subtract this quantity where I've taken a and again plug it into the function. All right, so we're going to add those brackets and then maybe that will help a little bit here. All right, so reading this right here it tells me to take a plus h and plug it into my function. All right, well my function right here only has one x. So that's the only place that I have to stick it in at. So 2 times the quantity of a plus h, all right, and then minus 3 because I have to finish the entire function. All right, that's me doing the first half of that formula. Okay, now I'm going to subtract. Now, second half of the formula, I'm going to take a and plug it into this function. All right, so again, I only have one place to plug it in at, so that'll be a... 2a minus 3. All right, this is a quantity. I am subtracting the entire quantity. All right, so that's why it's important to make sure that you bracket that off. Okay, and then all over h. Okay, now as I go through here and simplify this, I can, dro I can drop the brackets on this second notation thing here. All right, right there, I'm going to distribute that 2 for simplification there. And when I subtract this quantity, I'll go through and change all those signs. Okay, so I'm going to have a 2a plus a 2h, and then that minus 3. Now I'm going to subtract this quantity, so I'm going to subtract and change all the signs. So minus 2a plus 3 all over h. Now once you do that, all right, if you've done it correctly, a lot of things are going to cross out. I've got a positive 2a and a negative 2a, so those two things are going to cross out. Looks like I have um, negative 3 and a positive 3, so those two things are going to cross out. All right, now at that point, I do think uh, we could do some more crossing out, but I want you to be able to see, all right, I have at that point a 2h over an h. All right, and now even those h's are going to cross out. So this one was pretty much a straightforward one going down to a very simple numerical answer. Okay, now if we uh, step it up a notch here and maybe make our function a little more complicated, all right, you've just got more steps. All right, but it's the same formula, same plugging everything in, it'll just be more steps. Okay, now on this one, I do think I want to use the third formula that I gave you just to swap it up a little bit and make it different. So let's write that formula first. Um, f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Okay, and again, I still think it's important to realize you're doing two different things and subtracting those quantities. So adding in an extra set of brackets, all right, does not hurt at all. All right, now again, going through, take the formula one step at a time and read what you see. This says to take x plus delta x and put it inside the function. All right, well, on this one, I have got two places that I have to put it in. I've got to put it in here and have it x squared, and I've got to put it in here, so I'm multiplying it 2 by it. So this first 
part of this formula will take a long time here. So 3 times, I'm going to replace that x with what I'm supposed to plug in, x plus delta x, quantity squared, minus, I'm going to keep following here, I'm going to plug it in again, 2 times x plus delta x, and then plus 5. All right, so all of that is the first set of brackets there. Okay, now I like this formula a little bit better because this now tells me to subtract f of x. Subtract the entire quantity. Well, my f of x is this function, so I'm just going to subtract that function. Again, I need to put it in brackets because it's more than just one term. So when I subtract that quantity, it's going to ultimately change all signs. So inside here, I'm going to go 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Close that bracket right there. All right, and then all of that will be over delta x. Okay, now this one's going to take a little bit more algebra to simplify. All right, hopefully right in here you can see that this is a binomial being squared, which means you're going to have to FOIL that out. Hopefully you can FOIL that out without writing it twice. Right here you're just going to do a nice little simplification of you know, distributing, and here you'll be changing all the signs when you simplify there. All right, so let's go to this foiling, and I would highly recommend foiling first and then distributing the 3. It does take an extra step, but you're less likely to make a mistake. So I'm going to leave that 3 on the outside, and I'm going to foil this. Hopefully we can foil that in our head. All right, x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x quantity squared. All right, and I have did not foil that or did not foil that or didn't distribute that 3 in there, not yet. Okay, now in this middle term right here, I want to distribute the 2, so 2x, and then a minus 2 delta x, and then the plus 5. All right, so all of that is inside this first bracket. All right, but I'm dropping the red brackets at this point because now I'm going to go through the second part. I'm going to change the sign of everything in there, so I really don't need those brackets anymore. So minus a 3x squared. Negative times a negative should give me a positive 2x, and then a minus 5. All over that delta x. Okay, now one more time. I've got to now distribute the 3. I realize that it makes it longer, but doing that in two steps like that, you're less likely to miss that um, coefficient right there. All right, so I'm going to simplify now by distributing the 3. So a 3x squared, that makes that term a 6x delta x and then 3 delta x squared. And then everything else is just a matter of copying it down, minus 2x, minus 2 delta x, plus 5, minus 3 x squared, plus 2x, minus 5, all over the delta x. All right, now, here again, if you have done it right up to this point, you should be pretty lucky in finding things to cross out. I've got a positive 3x, squared and a negative 3x squared, so those are going to go away. Um, looks like a negative 5 and a positive 5 right there, which will cross out. And then a negative 2x and a positive 2x right there. So I am getting rid of quite a lot of terms. All right, at that point I'm going to uh, rearrange and figure out what I've got left here. I've got a 6x delta x plus a 3 delta x squared minus 2 delta x, and it looks like that's all I've got. All right, now writing it at this point, all right, you've got a lot of delta x's. All right, really, technically, mathematically, you should factor out a delta x on top because it's the greatest common factor. So taking out that delta x, that would leave me with a 6x in that first term. It's going to leave me with a 3 and then just one delta x right there. 2 times delta x is going to leave me with a 2, and that should be a minus 2 right there. All right. Once that is factored out, you can then say, oh, okay, now I can honestly cross those out. True simplification there for a final answer of 6x plus 3 delta x minus 2. Okay, so obviously a much longer problem when you go from just a binomial function to a trinomial function there. All right, a lot more work. All right, but two nice little examples on the difference quotient. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I'd love for you to do that too. Thanks.